Hi guys, I'm Jess Woods, Nike Running Coach, and this is Trainer of the Month Club for Well and Good. So today we are going to start with a running hit workout. So high intensity interval training. We're gonna start with 10 minutes of hit on the tread, and then we're gonna transition to four minutes of hit on the mat. So let's get started. We're gonna get started with a two minute warm up on the treadmill. So go ahead and turn your treadmills on. And you can start with either a walking warm up or a nice, light, easy jog. So taking the warm up super easy, easing into things. We don't wanna to start too hot out of the gate. I'm gonna start with just about 30 seconds walking and then I'll transition into a nice, light, easy jog. So, the 10 minutes of hit on the tread. The whole point is to get the heart rate up and keep the heart rate up. So we're gonna do really short bursts of high intensity, one minute on, and then just quick 30 seconds recovery. So right when that heart rate is about to come down, we're gonna bring it right back up. So transitioning to a nice light jog. When you're doing this workout on your own, feel free to extend the warm up five, 10 minutes if you need to. But today we're gonna go two minutes one minute down, one minute to go. Our first interval, we're gonna start at about a 70% effort. So one minute is 70% effort. Any racers out there, that's gonna be your half marathon pace. If you don't know your half marathon pace, that's all right. We're going by effort. It should feel faster than the warm up. It should feel like you can still keep it somewhat conversational. You can get a sentence out, a couple of quick breaths, and then another sentence out. In 15 seconds, we're gonna bring the speed up for one minute to that 70% effort. We're gonna bring it up in five, four, three, two, and one. So as the speed goes up, start to feel your stride opening up. Staying relaxed, dropping the shoulders, standing tall. If you feel totally out of breath already on the first interval, back off the speed a little bit. Really short and sweet. We've got just 15 more seconds for your 30 second recovery. Feel free to walk if you need to. More advanced runners. Feel free to jog through the recovery. We got our first recovery in three, two, and one. All right. 30 seconds, not a lot of time, but now that we're warmed up for the next interval, we're gonna take that same speed and we're gonna take it to a 4% incline. It should feel more like 90% effort, right? Because we're taking that same speed to a 4% incline. All right, so go ahead and start bringing the incline up. And now, one minute on, same speed, 4% incline, in three, two, and one. This time, as the incline goes up, instead of the stride opening up, we want quicker, shorter, choppier strides as you start leaning into that incline. As I feel the incline come up, I can feel myself rising up onto the ball of my foot, ripping the treadmill back. We have that quick, short 30 second recovery coming up. We'll bring the speed down first, and then the incline. Our speed is already coming down. 
in three, two, and one. Speed coming down. Another quick 30 seconds to recover. Incline coming back down to flat. All right, two intervals down. We've got two more to go, and then one fast all out interval. So we did that 70% effort. Now we want one minute back on flat ground, faster speed. We're thinking 80, 90% effort. So racers, 10K, 5K race pace. So we've got one minute on, back on flat ground. Just as that heart rate is about to come down, we're already here. One minute, 80 to 90% effort. We're thinking about 0.5 faster with the speed. Here we go, one minute. Three, two, one. So just like you felt yourself ripping the treadmill back on the incline, with these faster speeds, 10K, 5K race pace, 80%, 90% effort, you also wanna feel that same ripping the treadmill back. Make sure you're staying about half a step away from the console. Try not to hog the front of the console on the tread. You wanna give yourself room to use your arms. Nice butt kick, nice high knees. Give yourself room to open up that stride. We've got that 30 seconds in three, two, and one, coming down. We're ready to start to get to that 100, 110% effort. So we've got that same 10K, 5K race pace. And we're gonna take it back to an incline. So you're gonna, the goal is to go for that same faster speed. Try not to bring down the speed. And we're gonna take it to a 5% incline. Totally okay to be breathless here. We should be breathless at this point. There's only one more interval on the other side. So go ahead and bring the incline up first. Bringing it up to a 5% incline. Same speed as the last interval. One minute on in three, two, and one. As you're getting fatigued, try not to let those shoulders scrunch up. Try not to carry your arms. If the legs are tired, use the arms, right? If we're driving the arms, elbows straight back, the legs are gonna follow. We're leaning into the hill, but we're leaning into it, still staying nice and tall, trying not to pinch forward at the waist. This is our last incline. We're at the top in 10 seconds. Stay tall, proud open chest. Last recovery in three, two, and one. Bring it down the speed first. Bring it down the incline back to flat. All right, final interval. If you don't feel like you really pushed it to that breathless, 100% effort on the last one. Last chance here. We go one minute, flat ground, all out, whatever your 100% is today. So in 15 seconds, we go to whatever speed, it could be the same speed as the last interval, and that's your 100% today. Maybe you start at that speed and add 0.1, 0.2 faster every 10 seconds. But it's our last interval before we transition to the floor. So let's get going in three, two, and one. Back on flat ground should be the fastest speed you've gone all day. Putting it all together, the form that we talked about on the hills. 
We can use that on this final sprint on flat ground. Staying tall, shoulders relaxed, ripping the treadmill back. If you feel like you've got a little bit more, go ahead and give yourself 0.1, 0.2 on the speed. We're 30 seconds down, 30 to go. It is okay to be breathless here. Final push, 15 seconds. Last chance to bring the speed up. I'm reaching down, point two faster. We get to recover in five, three, two, and one. Carefully bringing that speed down. And now we have one minute to transition to the floor. Woo. All right, guys, you have one minute to quickly cool down, safely bring that speed down, walk for a little bit if you need to, and then go ahead and pause the treadmill, stop the treadmill, turn it off, and we're gonna transition to the mat. All right, so now we're gonna make our way down onto the mat, and same idea, high intensity on the tread, high intensity on the floor. We're gonna get the heart rate up and keep it up. It's gonna be 40 seconds on, quick 20 seconds off. Starting with jump squats. You're going to start with your legs, shoulder width apart, nice, proud, open chest, pop them wide, you go down into a squat, and come back up. So we got 40 seconds on, and three, two, one, jump squats. Bring the toes back in, keeping that gaze straight ahead, and now let's try and pick it up. The whole point is to get the heart rate up. We've only got four of these. You guys are all ready. 10 seconds down, 30 seconds to go. Let's see how many more. Drop squats, we can get in. Alternating left hand to floor, right hand to floor. We got a quick 20 second recovery coming up in 10 seconds. Coming on down to the mat in five. Coming on down in three, two, and one. Quick 20 seconds to transition. We're gonna come on down. We have plank with shoulder taps. Getting the heart rate up, coming down for some core. Get into that solid plank position. Nice, solid line from heel all the way to the crown of your head. In three seconds, hold that plank position. Shoulder taps in two, one. Right hand to left shoulder. Left hand to right shoulder. The whole point is to keep the hips super stable. We don't wanna see those hips swaying side to side. The easier it is, the wider the stance with your feet. We want a flat back. Try not to arch the back. Protect your back by activating the core. 10 more seconds. Let's pick up the pace. Quick recovery. In three, two, and one. Shake it out. We're gonna get back into that plank position. Shoulders are gonna be directly over top of your wrists, not above. We've already held that solid line with the back. You wanna get back into that position? Mountain climbers. We ran on the tread, we're gonna run on the floor. We have mountain climbers driving that knee straight through the pec line in three, two, one. Getting the heart rate up again. Pop, pop, pop. The ground is hot. Quick and light on your feet, just like you were on the tread. Shoulders directly over top of the wrists. Again, trying not to sway side to side. Knees driving straight through the pec line. We've got 10 more seconds, let's pick it up. Last move in three, two, and one. Coming off of the shoulders, back to some core. Let's flip around. We have toe touch crunches. So, laying flat on the floor, bring your biceps straight up by your ears, straight legs, flexed feet, bottom of the shoes straight up towards the ceiling. We've got 40 seconds in three, two, one. Lifting the shoulder blades off the mat. 
We wanna keep the lower back firmly planted. So try not to arch the back. Again, driving your fingertips straight up towards your toes. You wanna see some strong, flexed runner's feet. No dangly, lazy feet. We have just a quick 10 seconds. Let's pulse the last 10 seconds. Keep the shoulders up. We have four, three, two, and one. All right, and that is it. So 10 minutes of hit on the tread, four minutes of hit on the floor. And if you are more advanced or if you become more advanced with your running, feel free to take the treadmill portion one or even two more times through. If not, totally okay. Uh, this is a perfect workout to get your heart rate up as is. Thank you guys so much for running with us. If you wanna check out more Trainer of the Month Club workouts, subscribe to Well and Good today, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.